Have you ever experienced loss in your life? I'm not talking about losing your car keys, losing your wallet, or even losing your phone. But have you experienced real loss in your life? Many people have during this season with COVID. Many people have lost their sense of smell and taste because of COVID. Maybe you're watching this today and maybe you've experienced another loss. Maybe it's the loss of a job. Maybe it's the loss of a loved one. Maybe it's the loss of a dream or hope or career or the loss of a relationship. You know, the truth is every single one of us will experience loss in our lives at one point. And today we're going to look at this subject as we continue our series called Who is Jesus? You know, many people thought that they knew who Jesus was when he was here on earth 2000 years ago. Some people thought that he was just a carpenter. They associated him with his trade. Other people thought he was just Mary and Joseph's son. Other people thought that he was demon possessed and some people thought that he was crazy. But then when he asked this question to his disciples, to his followers, they said that you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. And Jesus himself, he explains more about who he is. He reveals more of his character to us when we read through the Gospel of John. In the Gospel of John, Jesus makes these incredible statements called the I am statements. These seven statements that describe who he is. We've looked at some of these over the past few weeks. And you know, when Jesus makes this statement where he says, I am, he's declaring that he is God, that he is the Messiah, that he is co-equal with the Father and the Spirit. He is a co-equal member of the Trinity. He is God in the flesh. But as I said, we've seen Jesus share other details about himself, other characteristics about himself, that he is the good shepherd, that he is the gate, that he is the light of the world and the bread of life. And today we're going to look at another one of Jesus' I am statements that John writes about in his gospel. We're going to see where Jesus mentions that he is the resurrection and the life. And we're going to be basing ourselves today in John chapter 11. This is what it says in verse 17 to 27. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had been in the grave for four days. Bethany was only a few miles down the road from Jerusalem. And many of the people had come to console Mary and Martha in their loss. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary stayed in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you, were, you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said, he will rise when everyone else rises at the last days. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live, even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told him. I have always believed that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who's come into the world of God. I'm sure you're familiar with this story. This story is about a man named Lazarus and his two sisters called Mary and Martha. In verse 1 to 16, we read about how Lazarus had become ill. And so Mary and Martha, they sent this message to Jesus. Now Mary, Martha and Lazarus, they were great friends with Jesus. They were extremely close with him. They were followers of Jesus. And Jesus would often stay there because they lived in this place called Bethany, which wasn't far from Jerusalem. So Jesus, he had this great relationship, this great friendship with these three people. And we read how Lazarus had become ill. Now Lazarus, he hadn't just caught a cold or he wasn't just, didn't have just a bit of man flu or he didn't just have a stomach bug. But actually this was a serious illness. And it was so serious that Mary and Martha sent a message to Jesus. They knew that Jesus was the son of God. They knew that Jesus had all power, that he was the healer and he would be able to heal Lazarus. So they send this message to Jesus for Jesus to come and visit them and to heal Lazarus. 
And Jesus, he receives this message from them because he's out and about and he's been preaching in different villages and he's been healing the sick. And he receives this message that his good friend Lazarus had become ill. But his response to this message is quite interesting. Listen to what it says in verse 4 to 6 of John chapter 11. It's a strange response. It says, but when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God, so that the Son of God would receive glory from this. So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. Now, Jesus, he wasn't mistaken about what was going on with Lazarus. He knew the seriousness of Lazarus' illness. But yet he remained where he was for two more days. Even though Lazarus was on the brink of death with his illness, Jesus didn't rush because Jesus knew the future. He knew what was going to happen. He knew that in this situation, God was going to be glorified in this the most. And so he delays going to see Lazarus. And then the worst happens. Jesus doesn't receive a message about this, but he knows this happens because our God is the all-knowing God. Listen to what it says in John 11, verse 11 to 15. Then he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. The disciples said, Lord, if he is sleeping, he will soon get better. They thought that Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping, but Jesus meant Lazarus had died. So he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there. For now you will really believe. Come Let's go and see him. In Jewish culture, when a family member died, they would be buried on the exact same day. Then following this, the family would have seven days. They would have a week where they would stay in the house for a time of mourning. And people would come over and visit the family. And this would be really helpful in this time of grieving for the family. And this custom, it's called Shiva, which means seven days and it's still practiced today by Jewish people right across the world. And we see in this period here, in this moment here in the Bible where Lazarus had died. He had died a few days after Jesus had received this message from Mary and Martha. And a few days had gone on. And now Jesus finally turns up to Bethany. And he finally turns up to the house of Mary and Martha. Four days had passed since Lazarus had died and had been buried. And in this moment, in, we see that Jesus enters into one of mankind's most darkest moments, into the most darkest moments that we can ever experience. One of the greatest moments of grief, the loss of a loved one. You know, the pain and the agony that Mary and Martha were feeling in this moment was completely and utterly overwhelming, as all of us know who have experienced the loss of a loved one. And you know, it's amazing to think that our God he doesn't turn away from us in our moments of emotional pain, in those seasons of loss. But our God steps right into that. And know today that God wants to step into your season of loss. Whatever it might have been, even this past year with this pandemic, maybe the loss of a loved one, the loss of a job, whatever it is. Know that our God doesn't distance himself, but he steps right into the middle of that. Jesus steps into our moments of greatest hurt, confusion, loss and trial. We see the, the Martha, she must have seen Jesus come in. And so she leaves the house and she runs towards Jesus. And when she encounters Jesus, she's quite blunt with Jesus. As you can imagine, these emotions that are going through. She had sent mes this message to Jesus to, for him to come and heal her brother. But Jesus never showed up. And now we see that her brother had died. And she encounters Jesus and she says to him bluntly, Jesus if you had just been here, where were you? If you had just been here, then Lazarus would never have died. I know it's interesting that the Mary, she in verse 32, she says the exact same thing when she sees Jesus, when she comes out a few moments later. You know, it's amazing to see here that, you know, sometimes we can often criticize Mary and Martha for being blunt towards the Lord. But actually, it shows their great faith in Jesus. They believed that Jesus could have healed their brother. And they were so disappointed. They're like, why, God, didn't you do this? Maybe you've asked questions like that. God, why didn't you heal my loved one? God, why did you let me lose that job? God, why did that relationship have to end? God, why can't I have that dream? Why, Lord, why? We all ask questions like that. And in their minds, we see 
that all hope was now lost. They thought that that was it. This was over now. Jesus couldn't do anything. Their brother was dead. So what was the point in Jesus even showing up? Pain, loss and disappointment began to fill their hearts. And we read this incredible response from Jesus here in verse 23. It says, Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Now Martha here, she interprets this and she thinks that Jesus is just making a nice statement. And she says, yes, Lord, I know that one day all who follow you, all followers of you will rise again from the dead. They'll be with you for all of eternity. But he's dead now. He's gone now. She didn't understand what Jesus was actually saying here. She thought that he was on about the future resurrection on the last day. But then Jesus tells Martha who he is. He announces this to Martha and to all those who are there. And I believe Jesus wants to remind us today and maybe say to you for the first time, this is who Jesus says in verse 11 to 25. This is who Jesus is. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. And Mary, we see following this after this incredible statement, Mary runs out, she falls at the feet of Jesus and she says, Lord, if you had just been here, then Lazarus would not have died. And then Mary, she begins to weep in Jesus' presence here. You know, it's amazing here. We see that our God is touched with the same infirmities that we are. He's moved as well, just like we are. Jesus was fully man and fully God. He knows what it's like to experience loss. And the Bible tells us here that he was deeply moved in spirit. He was troubled. He was angry, it says in some translations. Jesus' reaction here to the loss of his good friend and the loss of Mary and Martha's brother was incredible here. It's powerful. He was deeply moved by this situation. You know, Jesus, like I said, he isn't removed from our pain, from our heartbreak, from our suffering. But Jesus enters into our emotional pain. He wants to, wants to enter into your emotional pain as well today. And Jesus knew that he was about to raise Lazarus from the dead. But even so, he wanted to take a moment and he wanted to mourn as well. He knew what it was like to experience this. You know, rather than telling Mary and Martha, just hold on. I'm going to raise him from the dead in a moment. Just wait a moment. It says that Jesus was moved as well. You know, he didn't want to just rush this away. But the shortest verse in the Bible happens here where it says that Jesus wept. Jesus cried over the loss of his loved one. He knows what it's like when we go through those times of grief, grief where we lose a loved one. Or maybe other situations. He knows what it's like to experience loss. Those things and those people who matter most to us. You know, we see here that the biblical response to those who are in pain is first empathy before solutions you know that's one of the things that I've learned in dealing with people who are going through times of grief and I've had a few of those even in recent times it's not just to say you know you provide solutions and say we'll get through this come on let's move on but it's actually to show empathy and you know I know that because I've experienced loss in my own life as well I know what it's like to lose a loved one to lose the, you know those things that mean most to us I know what that's like and so that helps to empathize with people and, and to comfort people and to just be there for people, to listen to people. I know exactly what that is like. You know, it's amazing here that, that Jesus, he comes and he weeps with Mary and Martha. He doesn't just try to fix it straight away. He weeps with them. He cries with Mary and Martha. He enters the pain with them here. I know some people here, even in this moment, they interpreted Jesus as emotional response in a different way. Some people here, they were taken aback by Jesus' response to Lazarus and to uh, the death of Lazarus. But then there were others here who commented on Jesus' failure to save Lazarus. Maybe you've done that as well. Maybe you've blamed God and say, you know, God's not, I won't believe in him. I won't follow a God who hasn't answered my prayers. I won't do that. Many people react in that way. Even though Jesus healed so many people and helped so many people and he can help you as well. But then we see this incredible thing happening after entering into their emotional pain, after experiencing their loss and after experiencing this loss for himself, Jesus, he tells them and asks them, where's the tomb? I want to go to the tomb. He goes to the tomb, the Bible tells us, and he, he rolls the stone away. He asks for them to move the stone away. And, you know, we see here the Martha, she begins to object to this. She's like, no, actually, he's been in there for a few days. You know, the decomposition of his body had begun. And Jesus reminds her in verse, verse 40, he says, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? You know, even when our faith 
is small and absent. Jesus patiently waits for us and he reminds us that we can hope in him. Even when we don't see it in the natural, even when we don't have that faith, Jesus reminds us hope in him. And I believe the Lord would say to someone who's watching online today, hope in God again. Even though you might have experienced loss in your life, hope in God again, because our God will always come through for us. Our God is a miracle working God. He is indeed the resurrection and the life, which we'll see right in this moment. Jesus came to Mary and Martha, even though it was a few days, even though it seemed all like, like all hope had been lost. Jesus shows up. He steps into this. He experiences the loss, but he reminds them, I am the resurrection and the life that he is able to bring those things which are dead back to life. That is what our God is able to do. I love what Thomas More once wrote. He said, earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Then we see Jesus do something incredible in this moment. The stone is rolled away. Lazarus had been dead for a few days. The body had started to decompose. And then the Bible says that Jesus, he prays to his father in heaven the one who has all authority he prays and he has all authority he prays and he speaks these bold words he says Lazarus come out Lazarus come forth and in a moment Lazarus who is completely and utterly dead was raised to life Jesus shows each and every one of us here that he is in fact the resurrection and the life that Jesus is able to bring that which is dead back to life. Lazarus walks out to that tomb. Jesus tells him, get off, get rid of those grave clothes. You are alive. You are no longer dead, but now you alive are alive. Jesus demonstrates to you once again that he is the great I am, that he reigns above all. He is over creation, that he can bring that which is dead back to life. Jesus is all powerful, almighty. There is nothing too difficult for our God. Jesus is the God who brings that which is dead back to life. As we come to a conclusion today, maybe you're watching this and maybe you've experienced loss. Maybe recently, maybe in this past year, maybe it is the loss of a loved one. Maybe it's the loss of a job. Maybe you've experienced loss in your finances because it's been such a difficult year. Maybe it's the loss of a relationship. Maybe it's the loss of a hope, the loss of a dream, the loss of a calling. Or maybe you're even watching this today. And maybe it's the loss of faith. Maybe you've lost your faith in God because of all this. You've turned away from God. You know, whenever we experience loss, whenever we experience hurt and pain in our lives, we can be comforted and reminded that Jesus is in fact the resurrection and the life and he's able to bring that which is dead back to life and I want to encourage you today to call upon him turn to Jesus place your trust in him and you watch how he'll perform an incredible miracle in your life I've seen it I've seen him do it time and time again in my life we've seen it as a church even with somebody who couldn't have children God was able and performed a mighty miracle and they give birth to twins it's an incredible story God is able to do that time and time again whatever is dead our God is able to bring back to that life why because Jesus is the resurrection and the life and he showed that he is the great I am as well because he rose again from the grave he died on Good Friday on the cross the disciples, they thought that was it. But three days later, he rose again, triumphant over sin, conquering death. He has the keys of death, the Bible tells us. He is alive. And if you would put your trust in him, not only can you experience life right here and right now on this earth, but he's come to bring about even greater life, eternal life. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Do you know Jesus today? Have you experienced that eternal life? Do you know that resurrection life? Well, you can today. Call upon him. Put your trust in him. For Jesus is indeed the resurrection and the life. Amen. Well, today I'd like to give you an opportunity to respond to this message. Maybe you're watching this today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but you'd like to. You've heard how Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Not only can he bring those things which are dead in our lives back to life, but our God is able to give us eternal life as well. The Bible says we were dead in our trespasses and sins. The Bible says the wages of sin is death and we've all sinned. We all fall short of the glory of God. God is holy. God is perfect. 
And the Bible says there's nothing we can do to make ourselves right with God. We've all rebelled. We've all disobeyed God. We've all turned our our backs away from God. But God in his love and grace made a way possible that each and every one of us wouldn't have to go to hell and be separated from God for all of eternity. But God came and took our place. Jesus Christ came to this earth, the Son of God. He lived a perfect life. And then he died on the cross, taking the punishment for your sin and my sin so that we could be forgiven. You know, to go to heaven, it doesn't mean that we have to just be good people and do good things. There's only one way to heaven. There's only one way to receive eternal life. And that's by believing in Jesus Christ, turning away from your sin, believing that Jesus Christ has died on the cross, that he rose again and asking him to come into your life and be your Lord and Savior. And I'd love to give you that opportunity today. Jesus did it. Because of his love for you. He loves you. And maybe you're watching this. And maybe you've wandered away from God. Maybe you have experienced a loss of faith. Well Jesus is here today. With open arms. Ready to meet with you. Ready for you to come back. In a moment I'm going to say a prayer. And I'd love to include you in this prayer. The words of this prayer are going to be on this screen. And if you would like to ask Jesus to come into your life. And be your Lord and Saviour. Please repeat these words after me. Mean it in your heart. And today you can receive Jesus as your Saviour. As your friend. And receive the free gift of eternal life. Amen. Let's pray together. Please repeat these words after me if you're asking Jesus into your life for the first time or recommitting your life to him. Dear Jesus, today I surrender. I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean. I ask that you would save me. I believe you died on the cross and rose again. Today I choose to follow you and ask that you would be my Lord and Saviour. Thank you for the fresh start I now have in you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer today and put your faith in Jesus, then know that the old life is gone. The new life, eternal life has come. You are now a follower of Jesus. Your sins have been forgiven and you today have received the gift of eternal life. As a church, we are celebrating. I'm celebrating with you today. The Bible says all of heaven is celebrating. And we'd love to know about this decision that you have made so we can help you begin to take your next steps in your new journey of following Jesus. In a moment, there's going to be a link to our website, gatewaychurchcumry.co.uk forward slash know God. On that page, there's going to be a little bit more information about this decision that you've just made. And there's a form right at the bottom of that page. If you prayed that prayer today or recommitted your life to the Lord, please fill out that form, send it in to us, and then I'll get in touch with you just to introduce myself to you and send you a few things to help you in this journey. But please know we are here for you and we are praying for you and we are so excited for you. It's the best decision that you will ever make. Amen.